Hi guys, this is Lakshay from Simply Learn. Welcome to this tutorial on objects and classes in Java. This is a part of our Java tutorial series where we will be covering everything you need to know to master Java. Let us look at what we will cover today. First, we will talk about objects and we will implement two programs on IntelliJ to learn about objects. Then, we will move on to classes in Java where we will see an advanced program to learn classes more in depth. So, what are objects? An object is an instance of a class. Let's have a look at an example. In this example, animal is a class and dog is its object. The object dog has states and behaviors. We can have dogs with different breeds, sizes and colors. These are considered as the states of object dog. On behavior side, dog has behavior like barking, eating and wagging tail. So an object has its own states and behaviors. Now let's look at an example using Java code. There are many platforms to run Java program. So for this video, I'll be using IntelliJ. So let's create a new project. Let's name it as project one and finish. There we go. We have a new project. We have a class with main and we have a main function. So the code that we write should always be written in the main function. So let's create a new class to understand how the object is used. Let's name it as student. We need variables so that we can access the variables of this class. So I'm going to use student ID with the integer type, student name and student's age. There we go. Now we have these three variables that we can use. So let's go to our main program and start our coding. So we have a class named student. Now let's see how to create an object of a class. This is the syntax to create an object. Now the object here is S. I created an object S of class student. Now let's assign values to the variables. For this, we use the object S and use the dot operator and we have options from which we can choose from that we declared in the class student. So for this, I'll use ID and give a value. Similarly, I'll give age and give a value. And finally, let's give a name. Now we'll print its value. Now we are going to run this program. Let's see what output we'll get. And there it is. We have name, that's simply learn, we have age, and we have ID. Now let us see an example how we can use multiple objects for a single class. So let's get started. Let's create a new project and I'm going to name it as vehicles because I'm going to use cars and bikes in this program. So I'm going to use vehicles as a combined form. And yes, here we have a class main and a function main. Now I need two classes for this program. So I'm going to create two classes. First, I'm going to name it as bikes and the second class, I'm going to name it as cars. So let's create variables for these classes. So in cars, First, I need string name and I need the cost of the car. So cost can be integer as well because I'm going to use dollar sign in that. So I'm going to use string because of that. So same thing I'm going to do with bikes. Now that our classes are created, let's create objects for this class. So the process is same, but we are going to use different names for the object. First, the car class and I'm going to name as car1. And yes, we have created the first object. Now to create the second object. Similarly, I'm going to create five objects of the class cars. And I'm going to change the name for them. So I created five objects of the same class. So I'm going to create five objects of the bikes class as well. So bike one will be a bit longer. So I'm going to use B1 till B5. And I'm going to name them to from B1 to b5. So now I'm going to assign values to the variables that I created in classes bike and cars. So first I'm going to go with cars and let's name it as Lamborghini. Similarly, car to Ferrari. So I'm going to use names of the cars that are very famous and costly so that anyone over the world can understand this. So let's name car 3. I'm going to name it as Bugatti. 
सिमिलरली कार फोर पगानी एंड का फाइव नाउ आई एम गोना गिव नेम्स फॉर बाइक्स आई होप एवरी विल अंडरस्टैंड द नेम्स दट आई गिव बी फोर एंड बी फाइव लास्ट वन या Now let's assign the cost for bikes and cars as well. So the procedure is same. So let's do at one thirty thousand. Same B two. So B one goes for Harley Davidson. B two for Ducati. B three for Suzuki. B four for Ecos and B five for Yamaha. I am gonna assign values for these values accordingly. For Ducati, two thirty two thousand dollars. For Suzuki, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, and the last one Yamaha, five hundred thousand. Now similarly, I'm going to assign values for car one dot cost till card five dot cost. Two hundred three thousand dollars for Lambo. I think I can copy paste these as well. So let's copy paste. It will be a lot faster and easier to do. Car two, car three. Car four and car five. We don't need this. Uh, as per car two, let's take it as two fifty two thousand, and uh, let's make it as three million. Uh, as per this, let's keep it as one million four hundred thousand, and lastly, uh, let's take it as two ninety three. Now that we have assigned all the values for all this, now let's print it. and get the value i'm going to create a very simple program but a very user friendly program so it it's going to be interesting for you guys so we are going to ask the users what would they like either bikes or cars so we need to give them the options and our next program will be based on the options that the user select not the options we give as the command so let's do it let's give the options One bikes and two cars. I need to take the value that user gives. For this, I'm gonna write this command. So I have not used scanner yet. So let's import scanner. and let's create a object for scanner and yes let's get back so the data type of choice variable is integer that's why i'm using next int if the data type was string then i would have used next line so now that we have choice from the user let's use this value if the user chooses the first value that means bikes so the next thing we display is we have models and we are going to give five models for bikes to the user Here I am giving options to the users so that they can choose easily from number one to five. Now we can show these options to the users so that they can choose from one of these value. So let's use one more if statement so that we can find out whether they have this value or not. Before that, I am going to ask which one would you like to choose. To enter the choice, I'm going to use one more variable. Let's say n. So I'm going to store n. 
if n is equal to equal to 1 that means Harley Davidson then I'm going to show the cost of Harley Davidson this is the syntax to print the value for the cost or any of the variable that we use in class what if the user says second or third or fourth or fifth so for that we are going to use else if statements if n is 2 that means Ducati so we have to show the rate of Ducati or the cost of Ducati to the user now similarly I'm going to do for n is equal to 3 n is equal to 4 and n is equal to 5 now I'm going to do for n is equal to 4 and lastly n is equal to 5 that is our last bike Yamaha what if the users put a number that is not between 1 to 5 so for that I'm going to use else statement and put a message that please enter the value from 1 and 5 so now we have code for the bikes and the same thing what if the user selects that he wants to find the car so for that we have this the choice is equal to is equal to 1 so the same thing we are going to do for choice is equal to is equal to 2 and the same thing we are going to tell to user that we have 5 models the same names that I gave to variables I am going to give this to here second one Ferrari third Bugatti fourth Ecos and the last one Porsche now we are going to ask the users their choice that which number do they want to choose now we need one more value so that we can have it as a variable which can store the choice of the user so for this I am going to use C now if C is equal to equal to 1 that means if the user wants to see the cost of Lamborghini that he puts the choice as 1 so we are going to display this message the cost of Lamborghini and we are going to use else if loop to enter the next values for C from 1 to 5 if C is equal to is equal to 2 that means the user wants to know the rate of Ferrari then we are going to show the cost of the Ferrari same thing if the user enters 3 as the choice if user enters 4 as the choice then we go for ECOS and the last one if user enters the choice as 5 then we have to display the cost of Porsche now what if the user enters none of the values from 1 to 5 then we have to display a message showing that please enter the value between 1 to 5 now remember the first choice that we wanted from user to enter either bikes or cars so what if the user do not enter either 1 or 2 so for that we need one more else function to tell the user that either enter 1 or 2 and with this we have completed our code so now let's run this program for this we need to go to run and then run main there is a shortcut for it that is shift plus f10 so let's run the program and yes we have successfully executed the program let's test this program now so enter your choice I'm gonna enter one and yeah we have five models Harley Davidson, Ducati, Suzuki, Pagani and Yamaha so enter your choice I, I'm gonna enter one and yeah we have our result the cost of Harley Davidson is one thirty thousand dollars so with this we have completed our code and please feel free to type this code in your own computer and try out all the permutation and combinations that you can with this program.
So with this, let's move on to classes and understand the classes and their concept. Then we'll have a new program on classes. Now let's see what is a class. A class is a blueprint from which objects are created. A class describes state or behavior of an object. In this example, dog is a class. The variables in this class are breed and color. The functions or methods of the class dog are barking, hungry and sleeping. We use objects of a class to use variables and functions of the class. With this, let's understand classes with a simple Java code. Let's create a new project. Next, tick the box and let's name it as automobiles. Let the base package be student and yes, we have a class main. Now let's create some classes to do code on. I'll create a new Java class as cars. And then I'll create one more class with the name bikes. And then one more class automobiles. So I'm going to connect cars and bikes with automobiles so that we can use that program in main and see what can we do with the classes that we create. In automobiles, I need some variables. I'll take private double and let's say fuel and then same thing private double and then year and let's take one more private string and brand. Now let's have getters and setters for this. So these are used to get the value and set the value for the variables inside the class. There we go. We have the getters and setters for it. Now let's go to class cars. So public class cars extends automobiles. So in it, I'm going to create one more class or a constructor. And I'm going to print a message. Say a new car has been created. Car has been created. Now the same thing I'm going to do with bikes. Let's go to bikes and I'm going to use the same thing extends automobiles. This is because I can inherit all the variables from the automobiles class. So I created a constructor and I'm going to print a message. A new bike has been created. So I have created class, cars, bikes and automobiles. So let's go to main program. So this is where we should write our code. So I'm going to start with the code now. It's a very simple code. I'm going to cre first I'm going to create the variables or the objects of the class with private bikes bike. So one is car and one is bike. Both are objects for the classes. So I'm going to use these objects. Bikes bike is equal to new bike. This is so that my object can function really well. And now I'm going to run it. It will take some time to run. And yes, there we go. Our program has executed. And the things that I typed, a new car has been created, a new bike has been created, are done. Now let's try something else using the classes. So I'm going to bikes. So I'm going to create a new method or a new function. Public void kick for bike. So I'm going to print message. The bike has been started with kick bike has been started with kick now the same thing i'm gonna do with cars now how does a car start with the key so i'm gonna make a function public key and inside it i'm gonna print the same message car has been started with key so i should write void there to give the return value as void so let's print the message car has been started with key rotation let's write that as well so in the main program, I'm going to use objects to use those functions and let's see what changes they'll do to our program. Bike.kick and car.kick. Let's run this. And there we go. First, we used to have this two messages, but now these two messages are also there as well because we invoked those functions and methods that are there in class cars and bikes. So if I write bike dot key or car dot kick, this won't work. This is because key is not a method of bike or kick is not a method of car. 
so that's why i gave private static for the functions so if i execute it these are the error messages that i'll get cannot find the symbol method kick or method key so this brings us at the end of this video we learned about objects and classes in java i hope you like this video thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from simply learn Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.